Ciao friends and welcome to a new video from SQL BI. In this video, I want to provide an introduction to visual calculations. However, I'm not going to show you how to use visual calculation or how easy it is to create a running total or a moving average. Visual calculations are designed in order to make it easy for any user, despite of their DAX knowledge, to create simple calculations. However, as soon as the calculation becomes more complex, then visual calculations are harder to author, and you will find problems and issues in understanding concepts like the new visual context or the lattice of the hierarchies, how data is represented, and how the different functions work. In order to gain that knowledge, we need to start from the beginning understanding how visual calculations are implemented. The point of view is that of uh, professionals, BI professionals, they need to make a choice uh, whether authoring a measure like a visual calculation or with a model measures. There are advantages and disadvantages in both scenarios. Uh, and as a professional, you will be required sooner rather than later to make these choices. In order to make the choices, we need to go much deeper. So, this is the first of a series of videos uh, where we talk about visual calculations. For our SQL BI Plus uh, users, we do have a white paper that describes the full content, but there is really a lot of stuff to cover, a lot more than can fit into a single article or a single video. So we start from the beginning, and then over time, we will deliver all the different videos in order to cover the topic the right way. And the first thing that we need to understand is the new visual shape structure that can be added to a table inside a query, and that is the foundation of how visual calculations are implemented. Let's look at the demo together. On the screen, we have a simple matrix that contains the brand on the rows and the year on the columns. Now, before we start talking about visual shapes, it's important to note a couple of details. The first one is that uh, we have different set of values. We have the inner values uh, that are the sales of 2017 for a datum for Contoso for 2019, and that is the set of row values. But then the matrix also shows uh, the totals. If uh, we take a look here, we have uh, all these totals here and all these totals there. Now, the totals are numbers and they are part of the matrix. So when Power BI executes the query that retrieves this set of data, it retrieves different types of values, regular rows and subtotals and the grand total. Everything is in a single gigantic table containing all the values together. And then Power BI takes care of placing the values in different places depending on their nature. Let's take a look at the query that is executed when we fill this matrix. We just need to launch Performance Analyzer. It's already there. Uh, let's clear everything, refresh the visual. So we take a look at the query. The query that is generated contains a lot of rows. We have a first summarized columns and then a set of variables that perform different operations with the final evaluate. Nothing is relevant except the summarized column because this is where the actual calculation happens. So let's get rid of everything and let's just execute these summarized columns. Okay. <clears throat> let's check the code. This is the query executed in order to fill the matrix. And if I run it, you see that we have a brand 20. Contoso 2017, and then we have these two columns, is grand row total and is grand total column total, that indicate whether a single row in this table, which is a flat table, is a grand total, is a total or not. That flag is false nearly everywhere, but near the bottom we start to have rows that contain true. We have the totals at the row level, so for 2020, 2018, 2019, no brand, this is the total. And then we have the totals at the brand level. And finally, we have the grand total that contains blank, both in the brand and in the year. And then it contains the grand total of the entire matrix. So Power BI executes this query. 
it retrieves a one flat table where all the rows have the same level and then depending on these two flags will place the values in the right place so in order to fill both the row values and the row totals the column totals and the grand total at the bottom visual calculation go one step farther because uh, visual calculations require not only power bi to know about this structure but also dax in DAX, you need to be able to move to the previous row, to the next row, to the upper level or to the level below the level you are in. In order to obtain this kind of semantics, the DAX engine needs to know the hierarchy that is placed on top of the table. And this happens through a specific feature that is the visual shape. In order to see that, we are now going to create a new visual calculation and we see that the code executed for the query is going to be different. It's not only the summarize column, but it's summarize column plus a lot of further steps. We are not going to analyze all of them, only the visual shape part. But before anything else, we need to add a visual calculation to our code. And the visual calculation computes the growth as a percentage between the current year and the previous year. So let's do that. <clears throat> Uh, we just need to go to new calculation, increase the font, and let's call it the growth percentage. I need to look at the code. No, it just growth, so I use the same name as in the article. We need uh, a first variable, the current value, that is just the sales amount. We need the previous value, and for the previous value, we use the previous function. Previous retrieves at the previous value of a column given the hierarchy. So we want the previous sales amount using as the axis the columns, not collapse, but columns. So current contains, in this case, 58,000. Previous will contain 31. And then we compute the result uh, just by dividing the current value minus the previous value divided by the previous value. And finally, we need to format the result because currently uh, you cannot create format strings in visual calculation, so we need to format the measure manually. And we format the result using 0.00%. 0, 0. Uh, just one zero is enough. Let me reduce the font a bit so we can see the entire piece of code. So this is the visual calculation. It's a simple visual calculation. There is nothing fancy. But the thing is, now my matrix contains not only sales amount, but also visual calculation. This will force Power BI to use a different pattern when executing the query. And to make it a bit simpler, we also hide the sales amount. So we only show uh, the different values at the different levels. Let's go back to the report. We still have performance analyzer running. Let me clear, refresh the visual, and let's take a look at the matrix. Let's copy the code. And you see, it's uh, a lot more than before. We have this defined column at the beginning that contains the code we wrote. Then we have the uh, zero core, the same uh, calculation we had before. But then we have further steps. We have this visual calc input that performs renaming. And then here we have the visual shape part. That is the main topic of uh, today. We also have further steps. We have uh, the densification process that we are not going to explain. Then uh, the rows which need to be removed, even though they are densified, uh, are removed in this section. And finally, in this last section, uh, we remove any column that is not needed for the calculation. Maybe you have some columns computed for whatever reason that are not needed in the final result. The remaining part of the code is very close to what happened at the very beginning. But the core, the important thing to understand is this visual shape. Visual shape applies a hierarchical structure to the table indicating what is on the rows, what is on the columns, which are the group by columns, and how they need to be sorted. If you think about previous, previous retrieves the previous row, so the previous year. 
As human, it's very easy to understand that the previous year, if we are in 2024, is 2023. But from a computer standpoint, the previous year doesn't mean anything. It's the previous of whatever column you placed on the columns. So it needs to know what is the column that you placed on the columns of the matrix and what is the sort order. You see that uh, with visual shape is a, a clause that is added to the definition of a table. The source of the table is visual calc input and then visual shape defines two axes, rows and columns. For each axis, it provides uh, the grouping column, the group, the group happens by brand, and the column that indicates uh, whether this is the total at the brand level. You remember, summarize column returns uh, is grand total row total and is grand total column total. These two flags uh, are used in order to identify rows that happen to be at the uh, grand total for the brand. You have also the order by because that is needed for any window functions. And this happens for the rows for the column. There is also this densification process. Uh, densification is a kind of a technical step uh, that is needed in case some rows are missing from the table and they need to be added in order to guarantee that the full cross join of the axis is actually present. It's rather technical and we will talk about that into a future article. This is a very simple structure. So it's a very simple structure because we only have uh, uh, one column on the rows and one column on the columns. But if we use a matrix that is a bit more complicated, like we have uh, here, let's remove that a bit. What I did here is just, I just added uh, after the brand, also the category and then the color. So we now have three different levels uh, in the rows uh, and I have the year and I also have the months uh, in the, on the columns. So we have three levels on the rows and two levels on the columns. As you might expect, the visual shape is going to be more complicated. Indeed, if we use the performance analyzer, clear everything, refresh the visual and we focus on this matrix and we look at the code, we have the same code as before. We have all the columns and the visual shape part is a bit more complicated. Uh, I need a bit more real estate. I lost it again. Where is my visual shape? Okay. You see that we now have rows and we have columns, but at the row level, we have three different grouping columns. The first groups by brand and the total is grand row total. The second groups by category and category code and the total is, is the M1 total. Now, why do we have category and category code? Because in this specific model, the category is sorted by the category code. So I do not want to see the categories sorted alphabetically. I want to see them sorted by category code. Therefore, the grouping needs to happen by two columns and you have them here. And finally, the order by contains brand category code category. Uh, no, we have a group by brand, a group by category and category code, sorry. And then a final group by color with the total. The order by is by brand, category code, category and color. And that is for the axis, of the, for the row axis. For the columns axis, we have the first group that is the year with no specific sort order because it's a number and it is sorted automatically but the month has both the month and the month number with its own column total. And then we have the order by. So you see that uh, the visual shape indicates uh, to uh, DAX uh, what is the hierarchical structure. And that is needed because if we take a look at the code, uh, let me format this code so it's easier to read. The column that is defined, the growth, and by the way, it's useful to start learning that visual calculations are implemented as calculated columns on a table defined in the query. So these columns are created using defined columns, the same type of column that you have in composite models so when you create a calculated column in a composite model that is linked to uh, on a table that is stored actually in the remote model. But this here, everything happens on the same model. 
When you write current equal sales amount, this is the name of a column in the virtual table that is created, taking the result of this summarized column after the visual shape has been created. And the visual shapes uh, helps uh, in defining the semantics of these previews. What does previews on columns mean? Well, columns uh, is uh, the name of an axis, uh, and the axis is defined here in the visual shape. So axis columns, depending at the level you are in, so depending at the level of the cell that is computing the value, the engine knows that if the level is a year, it needs to go on the previous year using normal numeric format. If uh, the level is the month, it needs to go at the previous month number. So the previous row with a smaller uh, month number at the same level in the table that is created. The reason why you can create uh, these calculations in visual calculation, and you cannot author these as model measures, is because uh, previous, next, first, last, collapse, expand, all the functions in visual calculation, they rely on the shape of uh, a table. And the shape is provided by Power BI, both uh, the column names, uh, the shape of the table, and the hierarchy that exists on the table is provided by Power BI depending on what the user does. So there are no ways a model column can access rows and columns, whereas a column created in the query has knowledge about the visual shape created by Power BI. So visual shape is the core of visual calculation, and it is vital to understand how it works in order to understand the next concept that we will teach in future videos. As you have seen, Visual shape is the first step. Visual shape is just the beginning. Every function in visual calculation, like any window function, uh, any function that moves through the visual context, uh, works based on the visual shape created by, Power, created by Power BI. In order to understand visual calculation, we will need to introduce a lot more concepts. You probably know about the row context and the filter context. It's time to welcome the visual context, a new type of evaluation context that contains not only filters and the current row, but also the current level in the hierarchy created by visual shape, plus additional operators like expand and collapse that traverse the lattice of uh, levels uh, created uh, by visual shape on top of the table, plus many more concepts in order to understand uh, exactly how they work. These concepts are important because as a BA professional, you will be required at some point to make a choice, author something as a visual calc or author something as a model measure. There are pros and cons, uh, and a good developer needs to know the feature so well that it never has any doubt. If there is a calculation, you need to know exactly when and how and where to create the calculation in order to produce a model that lasts for a very long time. So all this concept, that is something that is coming in the next videos. Enjoy DAX! Mm -hmm.